and Paul's going to make it a point. As a matter of fact, it is God that laid it on his heart that you ought to thank God for a faithful church. There's a difference between a church and a faithful church. And Paul's going to explain why. Uh, it's kind of night and day, and uh, I prayed over and over again this week what to preach out of. We just finished Galatians, and we just finished it up, Paul visiting a church that fell apart. Now he's going to a church, and usually, and I don't want to get uh, too far in the message, but usually he went to visit a church because it was in trouble. A majority of churches are in trouble. But thank God there are those churches that are faithful. And they're faithful to God. You know, I was thinking, and I told this church over and over again, that salvation and marriage, marriage is a perfect illustration of salvation. Thank God for the faithful marriages. Amen. Amen. Too many marriages fall apart. I remember 21 years ago, different states and a lot of people flee Michigan to go to Ohio because Michigan requires a lot to get married. And Ohio, people, it was a joke in Michigan that you went to Ohio because you didn't need nothing. You just went there and just had to be 18. But Michigan, depending on the year, required classes. Fawn and I, the year it fell on, we had to go to a class and man, they explained every disease. And you had to take this class to get married. And man, there was about, I don't know, 50, 60 people in there because you had to take a class to get married. And I remember a few things in that class. One of the things that he said, first and foremost, is look to your left and look to your right. Only 50% of you will still be married in the next five years. sad part is it's true. Thank God for the marriages that stay faithful. And deeper into what he had to talk about, one guy just turned white as a ghost and just passed out. But as we turn to Scripture, and Paul has with him Timothy. You'll see his name, Timotheus. We're going to read verses 1 through 6. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you, and peace from, our, from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always, for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid upon you in heaven, wherever ye had heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it doth also in you. Since the day he heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. Lord, we're so thankful. Paul and I and our family are thankful that you led us to this church. We're so thankful for the churches that are out there that are faithful, that preach the word of God, that bring honor to you that still believe that Jesus is the only way. They preach the love of God. And that whosoever believes on you shall receive your son. Lord, be with the message tonight. And again, Lord, we are thankful we're here. 
for the faithful members that are here, Lord, I just go through my mind how much they mean to me personally. And Lord, as your message goes forth, Lord, if someone is not saved, may they come to know you. But Lord, for the saved people and for people in this church, maybe it's time to set some time aside and just thank you for leading them to a church that is faithful. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise and glory in Christ's name. Amen. Again, usually Paul went to a church and was in trouble. This church, as we just read, was known of a reputation of being faithful. And let me tell you, for even Paul, it was hard to find a church that was faithful. In verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, uh, if you know anything about Paul, it is said, and his name means small in stature, and through tradition, it is said that Paul was a, a small man, and the tradition goes he was small in stature, but he was a mighty man of God. God used this small statured man, and God used him greatly. Paul was one of the most effective missionaries of his day, getting the gospel out. And I was thinking even we may think and we are a small church, but even though we may be small, God can move and use us in a mighty way as long as we're in his will. As long as we're in his will. Paul, a man of God, sent by God, a missionary checking on churches in different locations, doing what God told him to do. And when he did it, he thanked God that God led him to a church that he seen faithfulness. And not to man, but to God. A church that knew to honor God. Knew that Jesus is the only way. Thank God for this church. And I'll share a few after the service, but once again, what we gave to Jeff was just beyond belief. We may not realize sometimes what goes behind the scenes, but when this church was started, I can guarantee you the people didn't think that they're going to reach people in the Yucatan. But since there was a faithful group of people that started this church, God has blessed. And the gospel is going out besides Yuli. We may not realize it sometimes, but as we give the missions, the word is going out to all over the world. Through a small church called Hedges Baptist Church. Because we chose to do the will of God and support people that are from God to expand his kingdom. Here Paul, and small in stature, and we realize that God has used him greatly. Paul, one man, and by the grace of God, we've seen that when he went to Galatia, he changed that church and turned that church around by implementing God's word. By going back what should have been done. Paul has with him a reminder. When you think of Timothy, his name means to honor God. And as I was studying, it's kind of good that Paul had Timothy with him because everywhere that Timothy went with Paul, Paul, it would remind him to honor God. We need to be reminded often that everything we do should honor God. It's kind of unique that Paul had Timothy with him everywhere he went, because Paul went to a lot of places. So everywhere Paul went, when he had Timothy by his side, it was a reminder to Paul, give God honor. 
Honor him in all ways. And I go back and forth tonight. Because with our marriages, we should honor each other. If we're just faithful to God, a faithful church will see God move. And for those who leave God's faithful church, you're going to miss out. And I'm here to say the same thing about marriage. Praise God for a faithful marriage. Those who do not have a faithful marriage, you're missing out on what God can do in your marriage. You're missing out on the biggest blessings that God will give you and bless your home beyond measure. The bottom line is, be faithful to God in all things. In your marriage, the job that he's given you, the church that he's placed you in, be faithful. And you'll see what God can do. Little as much when God is in it. But here we have Timothy, whose name means honoring God. And just a reminder. Paul, wherever you go, honor me. Paul always had someone with him. Usually a protege, a student. And I want you to ponder the question, why? Every time Paul went somewhere, he had somebody with him. He had Barnabas, he had Mark, he had Timothy, he had Titus. But Paul always had somebody with him, and usually a student. Why? Probably may have some thoughts of not having someone with him. Again, think about Paul and all of his traveling. Sometimes he probably thought, you know, it would be better if I was by myself. I don't want to carry this extra luggage around. I can get by probably better if I went alone. I could get things done faster. As a matter of fact, if you read scripture, him and Mark had a falling out. And he actually told Mark to leave. And it would be Barnabas. Good old Barnabas, in a nutshell, told Paul, don't ruin your relationship with Mark. Let him do what he has to do, but don't ruin that relationship. Those that are saved and brothers and sisters in Christ don't ruin a relationship if someone leaves. Still pray for them. Love on them. But why would he take someone with him? First and foremost, if you read scripture, it was the will of God to do so. But it shows you that scripture is true because the Great Commission tells us the disciple. The will of God for the believer is, in the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Why did, have, why did Paul have someone with him? Because he did what scripture told him to do. He was to teach others. Make disciples. Those that are saved, and even this auditorium may be watching, we are to teach others. You ought to have someone that you're discipling. First and foremost, if you have children, you ought to, and you're commanded by God to teach your children about God. And after your children are all grown, and you may say, well, now they're out of the house. No, just like Paul, he had someone else that he was teaching. Those that are saved, we need to realize it's not just the pastor or deacons or Sunday school teacher. If you're saved, we are commanded to make disciples. And that's to every believer. We are commissioned by God to teach others about him. And again, it starts in your home. If you have children, you shouldn't rely on the Sunday school teacher. God actually has blessed you with someone to teach, 
to disciple. First, a faithful church is in the will of God. What is a faithful church? It's a church that is in the will of God. Again, you can say that with marriage. What's a faithful marriage? A faithful marriage is a marriage that's in God's will. That's a faithful marriage. A faithful home is a home that's in God's will. That is a faithful home. And thank God for those homes. Thank God for those marriages. It may be quiet here this evening, but this is the way that God ordained it. That we are to be faithful. We are to be faithful to our spouses. And we ought to be faithful to God in God's house. And at home, it's God's will to be faithful to him. A faithful church, and thank God, and Paul's thanking God for this church. I found a church that's faithful. There are some that may be divorced and they're married now and say, thank God I found someone that's faithful. If we just, first and foremost, do the will of God and not just marry anybody and not just go to any church, but go to the church that God has led you to. And for those that aren't married, you wait till you find the person that God leads you to. That is the will of God. For him to lead you to someone. And you're going to be thankful just like Paul. Listen, Paul's not even a member of this church and he's thankful for it. I'm thankful that we recognize anniversaries and I'm thankful for the couples that are here that are faithful to each other. One of the first things that I did and I believe I shared with the church before. It was, again, God's will for me to do it. God led me to do it. As soon as I moved to Florida in that trailer in Jacksonville with things not even put away yet, got on the phone and thanked different people for their faithfulness to God. Call up a deacon that I known as a child and attract him down. You know, you may not think that people were watching, but I was watching. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness. It means more to me than what you realize. Someone that's not your child, it meant something to me. People's faithfulness means something to others. It's a blessing to others. There was a couple not too long ago, I think it was Friday, Wanting to be married Sunday night, tonight. I don't marry just anybody. You must be in the will of God. That means I marry only those that are saved. First and foremost, my question is, have you accepted the Lord as your Savior? I am not going to marry a couple just for them to get married or just for a dollar that they're going to fail in a year or two. Marriages will fail if you're not in the will of God. You must be in the will of God and be faithful to one another. In verse 2, but a faithful church is a church that teaches others about Christ. A faithful church is one that honors God in everything we do. And in verse 2, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What he's saying is, those who are believers and faithful. Pastor, is it possible for a believer not to be faithful? Yes. We just spent a lot of time in the book of Galatians, and according to Scripture, there were some people that were saved. But the church was a mess. First and foremost, because they weren't faithful to Christ. So it's possible. Again, it's possible to be married and not be faithful. It should be faithful, but it's not going to 
flourish unless you are faithful. So Paul makes it a point that this church, not only are they believers, but they're faithful believers. Can you be a believer and unfaithful? Yes, you can. There are a lot of Christians that are backslidden from God. But here we have a church, and God's led Paul to it, and Paul is just taken in. Probably one of these, it's good to be home. It's good to be in a church that's faithful to God. Those that are faithful, it means to be trustworthy. Again, it means to be faithful. People who show themselves faithful in transaction of business, the execution of commands, or discharge of official duties. One who has kept plighted faith worthy of trust. And I know the Bible says not to trust any man, but it's easy and it's valuable to trust someone that is faithful to God. You can't just trust anybody. Again, I hope you don't, don't just marry anybody. Marry someone that is close to God. It shows trustworthy. When someone is faithful to God and obedient to God, it shows someone, this is someone that's trustworthy. One who is worthy of trust. If he's faithful to God, more than likely he'll be faithful to you. What a concept. And most people don't even think this way. They just want to get married to get married. Some people want to go to church just to go to church. Do what God tells you to do, and you'll be better off. A faithful church teaches others about Christ. A faithful church honors God. A faithful church, if you didn't just read it, a faithful church can be relied upon. I am so thankful for this church. The faithfulness of the people here. When things that are troubling me, I can rely upon faithful people of God. What a blessing. You can't just rely on anybody. But scripture is showing me and what Paul is saying that a church that is faithful, a church that has believers that are faithful, you can rely on them. What a blessing. I don't know about you, but you're going to see some rough times. And it's good to know that there are people that you can rely on. Especially those who are faithful to God. Again, thank God for churches that are faithful. There are people, I am telling you, my phone is going off the hook. There are people that are hurting. And thank God they search out people that God lays on their hearts. A faithful man of God, a faithful lady of God, you can trust. You can rely on when you go through those times of trouble. But a faithful church teaches others about Christ. They honor God in everything they do. They can be relied upon, and they believe and trust themselves. They believe God. They trust God. Why can you trust someone that's faithful to God? Because those are the people that believe God and trust God themselves. You know, you can't show someone real love until you experience love from God. You really can't trust someone until they trust God and obey his word. In the New Testament, it means one who trusts in God's promises. Here Paul is saying when he went to this church in Colossae, here's a church that we, that believes in the promises of God. That believes the word of God for what it is. That if God says it, they believe it. And not only believe it, they trust 
what they believe. It also means one who's convinced that Jesus has been raised from the dead. Those that may be in this church for years and years, you may not realize this, but there are churches do not believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. The people that are here, you are fortunate to be here. And not because of me, but because of God. And because you are faithful to God. And those that are faithful to God realize that Jesus has been raised from the dead. They believe what Scripture teaches them. It also means one who become convinced that Jesus is the Messiah and the author of salvation. May I just remind you again, Paul just got back not too long ago from Galatia, where a church did not believe in Jesus. And then he goes to a church and he sits down, they believe in Jesus. Thank God. They must have wore Paul out. I'm telling you, Paul went to several different churches that have just fallen apart. It must have relieved him that when he went to this church, this church believes in Christ. They teach Jesus. They believe that Jesus is salvation. That word, Colossi, it means, and if you have a study Bible, you're going to see this word, you might see this word, monstrosity. But it has a deeper meaning than that. When you look up the Greek word for monstrosity, it means something you don't see every day. Paul is saying this church is something you don't see every day. You don't see every day a church that is faithful to God. Be faithful if God has led you to a church that's faithful. And faithful to him. I am telling you more than ever today, it is far in between to find a church that is faithful to God's word. That obeys his word. And not only obeys and trusts his word, but believes what they are seeing in God's word. There are some people, it boggles my mind, people that's been saved for a long time that I'm aware of, and they'll say something that's very off the wall. Why don't really, how in the world can you be under preaching and not believe this? How can you not believe in miracles? How can you not believe, and sometimes I have to question your salvation, how can you be convinced that there's other ways besides Jesus to heaven. That is not someone that's faithful to him. Jesus is the only way. But even in Paul's day, faithful churches are far in between. And I know I'm harping on marriage, and I'm going to harp on it. Let me tell you, there are people that are far in between to be faithful to you in marriage. So you ought to wait until the person that God leads you to if you want someone that's faithful to you. God is not going to, first of all, God's not going to lead you to someone that's not faithful to him. If God leads you to someone, it's worth the wait. To wait for the person that God leads you to. I am telling you, you are going to be thankful that you wait it. You're going to be thankful for those that wait to be led to a church and go to a church not because of the entertainment, but go to the one that God leads you to. And you will be thankful for what he has done. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae. And what he's saying again, you are hard to find. It's hard to find a faithful believer in Christ. But Paul says, but you're there. You're here. And what he's saying to that church and what he's saying to the members, you ought to thank God that you are here in a place that is faithful to God. A place that's faithful to the word of God. And yes, I'm going to say it. 
You're going to be glad when you wait to be married to someone that God leads you. You're going to be led to someone that's faithful to God and faithful to the word of God. And probably faithful to the house of God. You are so better off being led of God. And here Paul, once again, what he's saying is, you're hard to find. Ladies, there are men hard to find that are faithful to God. But they're there. Men, there are ladies that are hard to find that are faithful to God. But they're there. And be faithful that God will lead you to someone that is faithful to him. He's saying you are hard to find, but you're there. Yuli is hard to find. Our church may be hard to find, but yes, Brother Derek, we're here. And I would say even to the members here, thank God it's here. Thank God that his presence is here. That his word is being preached here. That his word is believed here. His word is trusted and obeyed here. Grace be unto you in peace. For our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And what he's saying is, those that trust God, those that are faithful, what he's saying to the church of Colossae, he's saying, again, thank you. Let me just tell you, you can't thank someone enough that means the world to you. You can't thank God enough. If God led a church uh, to you, you cannot thank that church enough. If God led you a spouse, and you are with a spouse that God led you to, I'm telling you, you cannot thank God enough for that. You cannot outthink God. You can't outgive God. But you cannot outthink God. And what he's saying to Colossae when he says, Grace be unto you and peace from the, our Father, the Lord Jesus, what he's saying is, since you've been faithful, you may not realize it, but God favors you. Church of Colossae, since you are believers and trust God and you're faithful to the things of God, you have found favor in the sight of God. Again, I'm going to tell you that about the home, the marriage, the church, any church, any home, any marriage that is faithful to God, God finds favor in you. And that means a lot. God doesn't just favor anyone. There's a few times if you read the book of Isaiah, he loved Isaiah. He actually said, you know what, I'm going to have Isaiah do this. Because I found favor with him. I know with Isaiah it's going to get done. I know that he's going to trust me and it's going to happen. God finds favor in those who trust him. For those who do his will. Those who wait for his answer. And those who trust, obey, and believe him. And he's saying, thank you, God finds favor in you. And what he's saying to that church in Colossae, he's saying, you will be blessed of God. You will be blessed of God. For trusting him, for being faithful with him, you will be blessed of God for being faithful. He's saying you are going to be rewarded by God. You're going to benefit for being faithful. One of the benefits, and then he goes into the benefits. One of the benefits is you're going to be at peace. You're going to have peace in your life. Let me tell you, there's a lot of people that don't have peace. Those that you think that have the materials of the world, some of them are people that do not have peace at all. Because those material things are not going to satisfy their soul. You cannot trust a materialistic thing. 
first of all, it's going to corrupt, and it's not going to be here very much longer. God is the only one that you can trust, that you can believe, and be faithful to. But he's saying you're going to be at peace. And not only are you going to be at peace, a faithful church, and Paul's telling them, you're going to be in harmony. I couldn't help but put that word in there. You're going to be in harmony. You're going to be in one accord in what he's telling them. You're a group of believers that trust God. And what he's telling them is, you know what you are? You're a family of God. You're a family. You may not be related to one another, but those in this church that are faithful to God and the way you trust him, you may not realize it, church, but you're a family. This church is a family. And when one member hurts, we all hurt. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. But there's a uniqueness about a church that trusts God, that's faithful to God. You're a family. It's often said in the churches that trust God, like the church of Colossae, that the church family is more family than your biological family. And that's what Paul's telling this church. He's saying you're fortunate. Not only are you members, not only are you trusting God, but your family. You can't put a price on that, is what Paul is saying. A faithful church is a church that is in one accord, and it actually functions as a family. You're going to have peace. And you're going to have a a state of mind that's tranquil. It means that you're assured. A, A church that trusts God is a church that is assured. You know what it means? It means that they don't waver. They believe in God, they trust in God, and their assurance is in God. There are, there are couples that are wavering. There are families that waver. You don't know what they believe, they don't know what they stand on, but what Paul is saying is, you guys stand on the foundations of the Lord. And he's telling them, you don't realize how fortunate you are. Maybe in this church, and I know some members have been here for a while, maybe you don't realize it, maybe you do, but how fortunate you are that God has led you here. How fortunate you are that you trust God and you're faithful to God. And sometimes we can get lost in a moment, but you probably don't realize what God's doing. And if you just stay faithful, I'm telling you, you're going to see things that you've never seen before. You're going to see God move. You're going to see things possible that you couldn't see possible. Even with this small church, if we're just stay faithful to God, and those that remain faithful and those that stay where God's put them, you're going to see some miraculous things. What God can do. In verse 3, again, you see the theme here of thank you? We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. What he's saying is, true men and women of God know when they're in a faithful church of God. You know, Jeff could have been anywhere today. There's a lot of churches that support him. There's a reason why he chose to be here. First and foremost, I believe God led him here. He had a message just for me, probably flowing for you. But like with Jeff and the rest of the missionaries, it's so, uh, if, if, forgive me if it's a, a word that, that may offend you, but it's easy being a pastor here when people love where they go to. And when people visit here today, I feel at home. Again, what Paul said is a faithful church is going to feel like a family. And when visitors come and when people are searching, 
especially men and women of God, when they're searching for a church, God's going to lead them to a faithful church. God will lead them here. And people know, people that are saved know the difference between a church, a regular church, and a church that is faithful to God. And what he's saying is people know about you. And not just anybody know about you, but Christians know where to go because of your faithfulness. That's where you'll find people who really pray and have conversations with God is a church that is faithful to God. You're going to find people that talk to God. You're going to find people that pray. I rejoice and I find comfort and peace knowing that this church prays for me. What a blessing. And listen, I know not just anybody's praying. What I realize is a, a true lady of prayer warrior praying for me, my goodness, I am very humbled and thankful. This lady that prays every day, this, this lady that's faithful to church, She's praying for me. Man, it just boosts my spirits. Same thing with a faithful man of God. When there's a man of God that's on fire and they make it known and they, they reach out and say, I'm praying for you, that does something to me. Because I realize not just anybody's praying for me. Someone's in tune with God. Someone that trusts them and believes them. Someone that is actually talking to God is praying for me. There may be a lot of people saying they pray to God when they don't even have a relationship with him. But I am thankful for the people that have a relationship with God. I am, man, I am so thankful for those people that are praying for me. Those people you can rely on. In verse 4, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints. What he's saying is, those that visit our church that are saved, you just don't love the members here. You love all of God's children. That's the way we should be. I don't care about their color. I don't care about what culture they came from. If they're a saved individual, they are my brother and sister in Christ. And they ought to be treated as so. And they ought to be loved as so. And we're seeing here that Paul, Paul's feeling the love here. He knows. Listen, Paul is in tune with God. And for him to tell this church, I don't know if this church realizes it or not, but for Paul to tell them that they're a faithful church, I hope they realize that this is a man of God that's saying this, that's seeing it, that is experiencing it. I said this search before. I just don't want to preach. I just don't want to read the word of God. I want to experience what God has for me. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where have you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel? Now that hope, what he's saying is, you all know where your foundation is. You guys know that Jesus is the rock. And you trust him. And for that, you know where you're going. You're going where the foundation is. The foundation is Scripture, which is the Word of God, which the Word of God is Jesus. And what he's saying is, what you have your foundation on, that's where you're going. Where Jesus is. Amen. The story about Jesus, they building your house upon the rock. They built their church around Jesus. And because of that, Paul's saying, you're going to meet him. You're going to meet the one that you laid your, your, the one that you trusted, the one that you received, the one that you laid your foundation on. You're going to see him. Amen. And what it's saying again is eternal security. We're going to see our Savior, those that are saved, those that trust him, and those that are obeying and faithful to him. We're looking forward to seeing him. 
There are some, and I, and I said this at the beginning of my message, there are some Christians that have backslidden, and I've talked to some saved people that want to stay here. They, they want this world. First and foremost, again, I have to question their, their salvation. But I truly believe there are some saved people that don't want to leave here. Are you kidding me? When are we going? Call me now. I love, one of the things I'm looking forward to, and I've said to this church before, I love our children, and I, I love Harmony, one of the joys of being a father of a daughter. I'm looking forward to one day walking her down the aisle, but I'm looking forward to even more, to being with Jesus. And I love my daughter to death, but if it came to a choice, Lord, take me. Take me now. And what I would hope is that's teaching my daughter that the things of God are more important than anything else to have in your life. It also means what he's talking in this verse, the hope, the joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. Again, in this church, just like I told you there are churches that are backslidden, and there are saved people there. There, there are churches that actually believe that you can lose your salvation. And Paul is saying you can rejoice that you believe in eternal security. You believe that Jesus says what he can do. Once you're saved, you're always saved. You can expect to be in heaven one day for receiving Christ as your Savior. In verse 6, which has come unto you and as into all the world, and bringeth forth fruit. As it also doeth in you since the day ye heard of it, ye knew the grace of the God and truth. A faithful church, a faithful person of God, is going to bring fruit. What this is saying in a nutshell, and I'm going to close with this, it's nothing that we do that can get someone saved. But we'll, uh, we'll, some, what will attract people more than anything is your faithfulness to God. Those that are faithful to God, your testimony alone will draw people to Jesus. Not the entertainment, not how many, and, and, and please forgive me if you take this offense, not how many scriptures you've memorized, People can memorize scriptures and live like the devil. But what Paul is saying that you have something here, church. And your faithfulness to God, for being in the will of God, you're going to bring fruit. It's going to happen. God's going to bless you. Just like when he promised Hey, Abraham, you're going to bring fruit, Abraham. Then Abraham tried to do it his way, and we all know how that worked out. But God promised him fruit to be done the right way. The right fruit. And listen, there's some churches that bring some bad fruit, and there's some churches that bring some good fruit. I want to be a church that brings the good fruit in. Not doing things my own way and trying to bring fruit in that is rotten. You bring in, and, and most of you know, you bring in one rotten fruit, the whole church is going to become rotten. I want what God gives us. What God, and it goes to show you that it's God who's the one that leads people to his house. It's him. And the Lord knows which churches are faithful and which are not. And to a faithful church, God will lead other faithful churches men and women of God, to a church that's faithful to God. And I'll say this, I can't help but say it, a single person that's faithful to God, he's going to bring you another single person that's faithful to him. And when you wait on that, you're going to see things you've never seen before. 
I'm going to share with the church uh, after the message of what we've done for, for Jeff. And once again, I was this shell-shocked, if I can use that word. That this small church, if you will, by just being faithful, God will use us in a mighty way. He will find favor with us. Bless us. And if we're faithful to him, God will bring more fruit. And I want the fruit that God brings in. Amen. We want other faithful people that love God, that trust him. Listen, those that are lost and wander in, we want you too. We want you to trust him. We want to love on you so that you see the love that we have for another, that the same love that we have for another, that God has love for you. But as we stand together, this evening a couple thoughts came to my mind. Maybe this evening you want to pray in the pew, come down and pray, but thank God.